Chris Evan has been coach over oh, and over yeah. and over and anointed minutes of clay and anointed all kinds Thank of you work for over. Let your Holy Spirit take control over everything and be done and say, touch hearts and lights, oh God, and minister to souls. We want to say thank you thank today, you. oh God, thank in you. Jesus' thank name. You. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's risen. Happy Easter to everyone. We are from Christ Life Spring Fellowship, London, Ontario, Canada. The Church of the Revelation of Christ that brings your restoration. Pastor is Pastor David Jawa here. Contact is David Jawa here at Rogers.com. Our service is on Saturday evening. Worship service at 7 p.m. and that's on Facebook. Prayer meeting Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Bible study Wednesday 7 p.m. on Facebook. The seven places Jesus shed his blood. I'm reading from Luke 22 verse 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was at the were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Isaiah 56, I give my back to the smiters, and my cheek to them that pluck off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Matthew 27, verse 29, and when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him, mocking him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Matthew 27, verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scored Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Psalms 22, 16. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Psalms 22, 16. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. John 19, 34, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, and we give you glory and honor for tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that you go take full control over this service and let your anointing flow. We commit everything to your hands. Bless and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I turn you over to my husband, Pastor David Jawa here. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you for those announcements and scripture reading. And I want to praise God that we could be here today to worship Him, to bless Him, to magnify His name. He's worthy to be praised, to receive all the glory and all the honor, all the power, everything that is due to his name. We give unto you today and we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. Hallelujah. Today, it's kind of a little sad that I lost a grand nephew and uh, we would like to extend our sympathy to Rose, my sister, Avalon, my nephew, whose son is it that was suddenly taken away. I want to pray that God will bless them and God would 
comfort them. And they would draw peace and strength from God. That the Lord Jesus would be by their side. The Holy Spirit, they comfort her evermore. Hallelujah. 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 Today, I want to remind you. In the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. It says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The blood of Jesus Christ had to be shed for our sins. And without his blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So we are thankful and we are grateful for the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus shed his blood seven times for you and for me. On that day, as he faced Calvary, on that Good Friday, as he hung on the cross. But before he reached the cross, his blood began to be poured out for us. When we think of the blood of Jesus, sometimes we think of a Good Friday. And it was only Good Friday the blood that was shed. No, no, no. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. It was in the mind of God already that his dear son had given his life for mankind. And it was in the plan of God. It was not after thought, but it was his plan that Jesus' blood be shed at Calvary. So when we read the Bible, and we read from Genesis to Revelation, one thing is prevalent, and one thing is revealing, is the blood, the blood that was shed at Calvary. In the Old Testament, they look forward for the day of the crucifixion. We in the New Testament, we look backward. And the Bible says we must always remember his death. Hallelujah. 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 Last week, we talked about the fourfold purposes of the blood of Jesus. We talk about redemption through the blood of Jesus. We talk about sanctification. Keep ourselves pure. Keep ourselves holy before God by applying the blood to our lives daily. We talk about justification, being set free from all unrighteousness by the blood. And we talk about reconciliation. We who had gone astray has now returned back to God. Hallelujah. So today, 
we move on. And we're going to look at seven places Jesus shed his blood. Hallelujah. Seven places where we find on that great day, on that Sabbath, as they were looking forward to celebrate Sabbath, Jesus Christ died on the Hyde Sabbath and shed his blood. There we would read about his blood being a poor about seven times. Jesus shed his blood in seven places on his body to pay our sins. While he was praying, he sweat drops of blood. His body was bruised and punctured and he was kicked upon. There were 39 stripes that were laid upon his back as he faced the cross. They brought the crown of turns and pushed it into his head. And so those sharp turns sank into his head. And the blood of Jesus was spilled. Nails went through his hands, his feet. And a spear went through his side as he died. And water and blood flow out. In the Vithkas, there is mention in the laws of Moses that God commanded Moses to sprinkle a leper with the blood Seven times. If a leper is being cleansed, he is to be sprinkled how many times? Seven times. And it is believed by many Bible scholars that that word, seven times sprinkled by the blood, is prophetic of us and prophetic of Jesus Christ at Calvary being he sprinkled his blood or he spilled his blood seven times. Hallelujah. Seven times he sprinkled his blood. His blood was being poured out. Seven times, different times. And seven is a number of completeness. Seven is a number of perfection. So when Jesus went to Calvary, he did a perfect work. He did a perfect work for you and for me. And he shed his blood seven times for you. Well, today we will look at why did he shed his blood seven times. Was there another man that shed his blood? Is there any other leader? Is there any other religious leader who shed his blood for you? No, nobody else. Only Jesus Christ died and faced death and shed his blood, and his blood was poured out from his veins. Hallelujah. Number one, he sweat drops of blood 
from his pores. All of us have pores. But what comes out of our pores is sweat. But that day when Jesus faced Calvary, before he went to the cross, he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he was praying. And in Luke 4, 22, 44, they say, And being in agony, he prayed more honestly. Hallelujah! Being in agony, he prayed the more honestly. He was praying. He was praying for you and for me. He was taking on the sins of the world, the sickness of the world, the griefs of the world, the pain of the world. And therefore, as he felt the pain, he sweat. And when he sweat, there were like drops of blood falling to the ground. Jesus cares about you. He knows you. And he's concerned about you. And even in his prayer, even in his agony, as he prayed, there were drops of blood in the garden of Gethsemane. One man said, it was in the garden of Eden that man sinned. It was in the garden of Eden that man was trodden and the sin of the world became rampant through the Garden of Eden. 4,000 years later, Jesus Christ faced Calvary. He faced the cross. And as he faced the cross, he prayed and drops of blood came out of his pores. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he won back the willpower of man. Man's will was completely destroyed and completely taken over by the will of Satan. But as he faced Calvary, he said to the, to the God Almighty, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And so as he faced the pressure of the sin of the world and the temptation to give up. He never gave up. He just faced the cross joyfully and looked forward for to die on the cross so that mankind can receive salvation, so that mankind can receive freedom, so that mankind can be free from sin. He overcame the greatest temptation that was so intense that it caused drops of blood as he sweat. All of humanity's sin was upon him. And he who knew no sin became sin. He became sin on that day for you and for me. He became sin. He took on our sinful state 
so that we can be free from sin. Hallelujah. So from his pores, they came drops of blood. And he conquered the will of man. So that man now can serve God in the perfect will of God to Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, the blood of Jesus was shed from his face. From his face, his blood was shed. In Isaiah, some 700 years before Jesus Christ died at Calvary, Isaiah saw that crucifixion and the death of Jesus Christ. You know something? That is why I love the Bible. The Bible talk about Jesus' death long before it happened. Describe it in detail. And so if you would read Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripe we, are, we were healed. The Bible said he was led to the slaughter like a sheep. I tell you something, Isaiah saw Jesus Christ as he faced death 700 years before it happened. And so in Isaiah 56, it says, I give back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that they pluck off the hair or they pluck off his beard. And you would know if you are a Jewish person, and you know the Jewish custom, the beard of a man is the honor of that man. Hallelujah. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. So as they grab his beard and pluck it out, he hid not his face from them. But when they crucify him, they pluck out that beard and they spit at him and said, prophesy, O king of the Jews, prophesy. The blood that was shed from the plucking of the beard Represent the honor that Jesus Christ died for. He died to bring back all our honor. We were gone astray. We had gone away from God. We had turn our backs from God. We were completely disgraced, but Jesus Christ here at Calvary took back that honor to us. Hallelujah. 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 From his face, poor blood, when his spear was plucked, out seeking to disgrace him and taking his honor. 
So they were all out because he was a Jew. They were seeking to discredit him. But he took it all. He took a toll in good grace and he died for our shame, our disgrace. Hallelujah. Thirdly, the shedding of Jesus' blood can be seen when the crown of thorns was plucked and pushed upon his head. The crown of thorns was pushed into his skull. In Matthew 27, 29, and when they had plucked a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and read in his hand and they bowed their knees before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him in the head. So as Jesus Christ frees Face Calvary. He had a crown of turns push into his head. The song said he did not wear a crown of gold or of silver, but a crown of turns he wore with pride. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ had a crown of turns upon his head. But I tell you something, soon and very soon, we going to see him again. But this time you see him, not with a crown of turns, but a great crown upon his head, crown upon crowns upon his head, and we come riding to in Jerusalem on the white horse, as a conquering Savior, not as a suffering Savior. So the next time you see Jesus Christ upon earth, he's going to be the champion riding on the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The crown of turns symbolize that Jesus has won back our peace of mind and that we are free from torment. The enemy can no longer torment our minds. You see, we think with our brain. So as they puncture the head of Christ, they were tormenting him. And he took that torment for us. He conquered fears. He conquered doubts. He conquered the things that would keep his tongue in life. So that now there is no, there is no torment in fear but the perfect love of God cast out all torment I repeat that the perfect love of God which is Jesus Christ has conquered every torment hallelujah 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 fourthly he shed his blood from his back. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Ah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Matthew 27, 26. Then release he Barnabas 
So I could see Pilate releasing Barnabas to the Jews, to the elders of the Jews. They, they took on the man instead of Jesus. And when he had searched, searched Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. One of the most picture like view of the surgeon of Jesus Christ was that frame by Mel Gibson. What is it called again? Huh? Passion of Christ. And there you see. Jesus Christ, his back was plowed by a, a whip with metals, and he was a bloody sight to look at. This surgeon is one of the most painful death and painful thing that could happen to a man as he faced Calvary. Many people died just by the surgeon before they reached the cross. But Jesus took it all because when he took those stripes, he brought my health back to normal. And so the Bible say that by his stripes we are healed. So Jesus took the 39 stripes for our sickness, for our healing. Fifthly, as they took him to Calvary. They stripped him. And you could picture him there, 39 stripes on his back. He was like naked, but they did not finish with him as yet. They took his hands and spread it out on the cross. And they nail him there, big spikes, they puncture his hands, and there he lay upon the cross with his hands crucified. The book of Psalm 22, 16 say, For the dogs come past me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Over a thousand years before Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, David saw a picture of Jesus Christ on the cross. Demonic spirits were all looking at him and laughing and believed that they had crucified the Christ style. And so they pierced his hands, they punctured, and out of his hands came the blood flowing down. He took the prayers in his hands to give us dominion over what we touch. So today we can have dominion, dominion through the blood that was shed at Calvary. 
The Bible said, These signs shall accompany those who believe. It is that in my name they shall cast out devils. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. In my name they shall take up serpents. In my name they shall drink any deadly thing and it shall not hurt them. In my name, in the name of Jesus, they shall lay hand on the sick and they will get well. The blood that was shed from his hands gave us the authority to use our hands to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. His sweet, sickly, his sweet was peace. For dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked enclose me. They press my hands and feet. Jesus' feet was worn. Jesus' feet was pierced. So the one, the dominion over the places that we would walk. The Bible said Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions, what are serpents and scorpions? They are demonic spirits. They are powers of evil that are in this world. Jesus Christ has given us power over every power of Satan. Hallelujah. Over all, all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let me tell you something with the blood that was shed from his feet, he's giving you power to tread upon scorpions. You will use your feet and trample upon the works of Satan and bind the powers of darkness and bind the powers of hell and take authority over the works of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And lastly, as he died there, a soldier pushed a spear into his side. And from his side, water and blood flow. In John 19, 34, and one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side, and forthwith came out blood and water. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed immediately, as he said, into your hands. Do I commit my spirit? The blood came out from his side, signifying that he is won back our joy and has healed us from a broken heart. Why did that soldier pierce him at the side where the heart is? He pierced him at the side. Because out of his heart flow healing to every person that has a broken heart. Today in this world, there are so many people with broken hearts. So many people who are disgusted with living. And they want somebody who can feel their grief, somebody who can feel their pain, somebody who can be with them in their trials. And that person today 
I point you to Jesus Christ, the one who is or who has faced death and took your grace and your sorrows. So today, I want to tell you in closing, Jesus shed his blood so that I can experience full and everlasting life. The Bible says he's come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I want you to know on that day in the garden his his blood came through his pores as he sweat it was drops of blood as the beat him and they rip his garment apart and the cat nine a rod with many metals sunk into his back the Bible say by his stripe he healed he was bruised and beaten he was hurt and in Side of him, he was completely like a, a plow, a plow running through his body. On his head, there was a crown of thorns, and I could see him there with blood coming out. Of his head. I could see in his hands a spike of a nail, of two nails going through his hand. And his face it. I could see his feet. Another spike ran through both feet as he hung upon the cross. And I could see a spear running through his side as he gave up the ghost. And lastly, Italy in heaven, in heaven, he has got, he has got his blood preserved. When he died, he went to hell. And before he ever communicated to a people, he went to Father. He went to the Father and presented his blood. And presented his blood. He said, Father, this is my blood that I have shed for humanity. There is no other person and you listen to David Jehovah here. There is no other person who went before God the Father and said, This is my blood that I have shed for humanity. Only Jesus. And that is why only through the death of Jesus Christ you can be saved. Only through his blood we can be saved. So tonight, trust him and believe him and he will take care of your situation. So bow your head, look to Jesus and say, Lord, let your shed blood flow through me. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all the things I have said about you. Forgive me of all the things I have done. Forgive me of all the religions I, I have tried. But they cannot save me by your blood. Your blood. <laughs> oh, the blood of Jesus was shed. 
for you and for me. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray God for those who are right now in need of a Savior. I pray that your touch and your precious blood would wash our sins away. Cleanse us, deliver us from every sin. Not only from sin, demonic oppression, demonic powers that are lurking at us. But in Jesus' name, I bind those powers and I release the blood of Jesus against them. Hallelujah. 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 The blood of the Jesus. The blood of Jesus. And today for those that are sick. I need healing. I release the stripes of Jesus Christ. And the blood upon you. Hallelujah. Receive your healing now in Jesus' name. I said, receive your healing in Jesus' name. For by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. You are healed. Hallelujah. I believe God. And I thank God, the Father, for sending his Son. And given us his Holy Spirit. So today we can understand this message. God bless you on this Palm Sunday. Remember to get your palm away with it. And let the peace of God be with you. God bless you real good. This is Pastor David saying I love you. And God bless you.